Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Monster video. In today's video, I'm back with another Monster review. We have the Mythic uh, Lady Meow, and I'm going to be doing a full review from level 1 to 150, rank 5. So, if you guys want to see the best skills, at the best runes, uh, the best relics, you know, the best obscure talents and stuff like that, then watch this video. I'm going to be going in depth and showing you guys all of that uh, throughout this video. Also, I do want to mention that this was given to me exclusively by Social Points. So, all the resources and everything was provided by Social Points. So, huge thanks to them. But, anyways, guys, before we get started, if you are new to my channel, go on ahead that subscribe button. Also, drop a like on this video to show support. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So, I'm going to go ahead and quickly speed this up. And we're going to go ahead and hatch it. Hopefully, we have a spot. Nice. All right. So, we have Lady Meow. I'm going to go ahead and jump this. And this is the new monster. Nice. All right. I wonder uh, what made them, you know, name this monster Lady Meow. Like, how, how did they come up with it? Is it because it's just female and it's a cat? I think it's a cat, right? I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comments. Um, but I'm guessing one of her relics will be sword because she's holding a sword. In case you didn't know, she starts off with dodge area at bring zero. So right away you have access to dodge area. This is actually really, really good. Having access to dodge area, it prevents the enemy from uh, landing their AOE skills. So you're basically um, fine against that. But if they have pierce, then that's a whole different story. Anyways, at rank one, you have immune to daze. So you have access to daze, which is actually all right, I guess. It's not the best, but it comes in handy in some cases. And then at rank three, you have status cast or self stun immunity. So um, I've got to say, I really like the dodge area, but then it's sort of like downgrades, as you guys can see. Um, but you know what? It is what it is. All right, so let's go ahead and get Lady Meow to level 100. There we go. And let's check out the stats. So 8,448, comparing this to the other Crypt and Mythic monsters at the game right now. That's actually a great uh, amount of strength. And then your life, 86,860. Comparing it to the other growth of Mythic Monsters, that is pretty low, I gotta say. It is low. Um, and then speed is 6,338. That's good. Okay. So your strength and your speed is pretty good, but then your life kind of sucks. So before I change the skills, let's go ahead and take a look at the ultimate. So this uh, ultimate, apparently it deals heavy or damage to all enemies, applies bleed to one enemy, gives an extra turn to itself. That is pretty interesting. Your ultimate gives you an extra turn. That is cool. All right, you know what? That's actually not that bad. All right, so apparently it's an earth attacker, I'm assuming. Um, okay, so this skill, it's an AoE moderate earth damage to all enemies, and then you apply a stamina regen to yourself. So that stamina regen could actually come in handy. Uh, then you have this skill, which uh, deals very heavy earth damage to one enemy, applies daze to one enemy. That daze basically reduces the enemy's power and accuracy by 25%. And let's see what else we have. Okay. Dagger throw, it's a moderate earth damage to all enemies, applies bleed to all enemies. So it's an AoE uh, moderate earth damage and applies bleed. Kind of like this one, it's just that this one applies stamina regen, the other one applies bleed to all enemies. Alright, uh, this skill, it applies immunity to stun and a double damage to itself. So stun immunity lasts for 3 turns and then the double damage only lasts for 1 turn. So here's the thing, here's the thing with this. If you're gonna run this mythic with any other monsters that um let's just say they apply some type of damage boost right it could be double damage it could be triple damage or it could just be damage boost in general um i wouldn't really recommend running this skill but if you want to then you can um another reason why i wouldn't recommend running it is because of the immunity to stun if you could get it to rank three which you should because you know uh later on you're gonna uh, do the challenges in the legends pass you will be able to rank it up to rank three so You'll just get the immunity to stun as a status caster, so why bother having this skill? But if you're not going to run any uh, monster on your um, team that applies double damage or triple damage, like for example, Vishama, then you can go ahead and run this skill. So there's another AoE days. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's too many AoE skills, so I guess I'll just have two AoEs and then one single target. And let's see what else we have there. This, it applies a damage boost and stamina regen. It's a zero cooldown, so pretty good against CDA monsters, but you do need 35 stamina. Um, but hey, you can actually regenerate that stamina if you already used uh, this AoE skill at the beginning or something. Um, and then let's see what else we have. Adventure at heart. Adventure at heart. Okay. It's a low earth damage to all enemies. That's it. Zero cooldown, 30 stamina cost. So make sure you have the stamina. But the zero cooldown, I mean, you're fine against CDA, so that's good. Another zero cooldown skill, it's a moderate earth damage to one enemy, applies bleed to one enemy. 25 stamina. At the moment, I don't think there are any corrupt monsters that actually apply CDA. Is there? I don't think so, right? So you are you don't really have to go with the Royal at birth um, right now. But maybe later on, if you want to swap it up, you know, and use it. You could probably use it um, over Meowthic Guard or something. 
Uh, but yeah, as long as you have the 25 stamina, you can go ahead and continue spamming this skill as long as you want. Or as much as you want. Uh, so that's really, really nice. Uh, but overall, I think I'm going to go with these four skills. Every single one of her skills are Earth Elements. So against her own element, she won't be able to deal that much damage. Uh, the only legendary ones are the ones that gives her damage boost. And it's basically a self-support skill. So she's not dealing any damage with those type of skills. You know what I mean? So it's just self-support. Um, so unfortunately, she won't be able to deal that much damage against her own element, which is Earth. Uh, for example, Ole Fanatic will be... It, you know, he, all the fanatic would be a great counter against this mythic because she won't be able to deal too much damage. Maybe with that double damage a little bit, but um, that's pretty much it. Uh, and then also another thing I want to mention is that um, her skills against CDA, she's fine. You know, like look at this. Zero cooldown on this one. One turn cooldown on this one. Three, that's all right, I guess. That's moderate. This one, two, that's kind of low. And then three, that's same thing as the other three. And then two, that's also a bit low. You know what I mean? Like, look at these other ones right here. All zero cooldowns. So she's pretty good against CDA monsters, I've got to say. Now for the relics, you have access to sword and also an amulet. Now, we're not surprised she is a holding a sword. So, of course, it's going to be uh, one of the relic slots. You can go with either cane sword or uh, laser beam sword. I really, really, really like laser beam sword. So I'm going to go with laser beam sword. So if you have that, go on and give it. You can also with, go with cane sword, like I mentioned. Uh, for the amulets, you could go with, for example, maybe Tainai's amulet. Uh, you can go with Shirza's amulet as well, which is actually pretty popular. You can give that. Um, but uh, yeah, Shirza's amulet, uh, Nahane's amulet, you could go with that one as well. Uh, but I'm just going to go with Shirza's amulet in this case. So once you get it to rank one, uh, you can equip a Unrelenting Assault. And here's what I recommend giving, okay? So out of all of these ones, um, you can go with Unrelenting Assault. This actually works best for this monster. One of the best um, obscure talents that you could give for this mythic. Another one would be Burning Hands. If you have Burning Hands, I recommend giving that. Um, not just that, but also you can maybe go with Soul Drag. Soul Drag won't work the best, but hey, it's not really that bad. Once you get it to rank 3, you'll have access to every single one of the traits. You have access to Immune to Daze. You also have access to the Immune to Sun, the Status Caster one. I'm gonna get it to rank 3 real quick and level it up uh, to 130 and I'm gonna show you guys the stats in just a second. So here we go. The stats are shown here. So this is what you get. Uh, rank 3. This is basically the stats uh, with no runes on. So for the rune setups, here's what I recommend giving. You can go with 2 strength and 1 speed or you can go with 2 speed and 1 strength. You could also go with 3 strength runes. 3 strength runes isn't really a bad idea. You can go ahead and equip an Unrelenting Assault like how I am right now. I'm running a Unrelenting Assault on this mythic. And you, it's not really a bad idea because if the enemy doesn't have an Anticipation Monster, you can go ahead and turn transfer with maybe Lenormand or something taken in the first turn. Turn transfer over into the, to her and she could actually destroy the enemy with 3 strength runes. Now, I'm not going to do 3 strength runes because you never know. Uh, what if I I end up you know destroying the enemy i just don't want to end up winning by accident or something like that because i'm not allowed to win with these monsters so all right here we go we're facing a 150 tabora 150 lenworm and a 150 uh, not what is that bombita right okay so i take in the first turn i'm the fastest here yes okay so here right away i could either go with this or i could go ahead and you know you know what hold on hold up hold up this is actually perfect this is perfect against bases like this, where uh, there's Sabora with, uh, for example, either Linworm or a CDA monster cool activator. For example, like Kodama or you, you just name it, right? You've seen it before. Um, here's what you should do. In the beginning, you go with Age Overseer if there's a tank. So look, the enemy's monster is probably going to go with uh, my favorite trick. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So my favorite trick. And look, when the next monster goes, if it's a CDA or if it's a Linworm, it, the enemy or this monster won't get hit by it so as you guys can see um because of that dodge area trait i'm able to use all of these skills here now i'm gonna go with a double damage i guess first shall we go with double damage i don't think unrelenting assault is gonna kick in with that i don't think so right so i'm gonna just go ahead and use this bam wait for it unrelenting assault 20k damage and also laser beam sword and also shares his amulet on top of that so that's a lot of damage altogether. Uh, but unfortunately, my stamina is almost gone. I'm going to go ahead and use this so I can regain some stamina. That'll also give me an extra turn. So I don't even have to charge up. Wait for it. Just wait for it. Look, the stamina regen next turn. It's going to give me some stamina. I just regain some of my stamina. And then I could go ahead and use a dangerous throw. Unrelenting assault kick then again and give me another extra turn. And I still have my stamina regen. And maybe I could go with a double damage now if I wanted to for next turn. 
let's say I wanted my damage to increase for next turn, I could go ahead and do it. Uh, these other two monsters are going to turn back into normal. Uh, so we'll see how it goes from here. All right, you turn back to, to normal too. And what I can do here is maybe use Sequence Bender, really, because there's no end speeders. And then here I could use maybe this. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and use it. Bam, that did 200k damage. That was a lot of damage, man. A trophy. I'll go ahead and use Post and Gloves. Let's go ahead and do that. Eliminate you. Master Staff. And then I could basically end up eliminating to board if I wanted to and end up winning this. But um, I'm not allowed to win, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Another one of these bases. See what I mean? <laughs> this is what I was talking about earlier. This time there's no Linworm. But hey, it's literally kind of similar. I've got to say, to Bora. And then there's a tank, although last time it was Crawler, but this time it's Gidalus. And then there is Kodama there, CDA. So I can go ahead and fight this. It doesn't matter who takes in the first turn. Alright, I take in the first turn, I'm going to go ahead and do Age Overs here. Now look, Tabor's going to go in next, and what Tabor's going to do is use my favorite trick, and then right after is going to be the other one, Soul Eater won't land because I have Dodge Area. So I didn't get hit with CDA at all. So, see? None of that worked. Not even the Relic. So I can, for example, either go with my AoE skill here, or I could go with, yeah, whichever one I want to, honestly. But I'm going to go ahead and OTK you. Bam. Uh, Lazy Beam Sword kicked in, shares those amulets. But I don't think it'll give me an extra turn, right? No, it didn't. Okay. Because I fully eliminated. But that's okay. I can go ahead and turn transfer here with Linworm. So this is actually a pretty good combo. Linworm with her, and then a tank. It's really, really nice. So I can go ahead and either attack. Yeah, let's just go and attack. And then uh, Unrelenting Assault kicking in, just like that. Giving me an extra turn. Shares his amulets. Remove full stamina. Or the remaining stamina. I guess you could say. Uh, this monster's Eltron's mask kicked in and removed some stamina. But hey, no worries because I have the stamina region helping me out with that skill. So that skill is actually pretty good. I recommend running it. If you guys um, are going to hatch this monster and let's say you're going to get it. I recommend running that AoE uh, skill which gives you stamina regen. It's really, really nice. I'm going to go with this. Damage boost. For next turn. So I wonder how powerful this mythic will be against Daedalus. Let's go ahead and charge up. Alright, against Daedalus, not very powerful. So this is what I meant earlier. Against her against her own elements, she won't be able to deal too much damage. So that kind of sucks, right? But other than that, against other mythics, you can deal a ton of damage. She's quite powerful. You can go with your AoE skill here again, or you could go with the AoE bleed, which uh, actually just you know to deal some damage each turn and also makes the enemy kind of weak. Um, I could go with Greater Times Curse here. Revert events. Uh, um, Greater Times Curse. I guess I could go with this, you know. Let's go ahead and do it. Eltron's Mask Kick then. Empathos Armor. Okay. Body Slam. I could do this. Uh, shall we do it? Let me see. You do have a Ural SN. Why not? Bam. You're going to come back, and I'm going to go ahead and leave, uh, because I didn't have any stamina, and of course I can't win it. Uh, but yeah, uh, just make sure to... Here's the thing, Master Staff is actually pretty good on Linworm, but if you don't want to run Master Staff, you could go with King of Atlantis, because the thing is, uh, when Linworm's stamina is full, and let's say one of your other allies, including uh, Lady Meow, if you're running Lady Meow with uh, Linworm, her stamina, it'll just stay low, it won't increase at all. But with King of Atlantis, it'll go ahead and increase when you, whenever you need it. So I just got it to rank 5. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. And I'm going to show you guys the stats at level 150 with the runes and without the runes, of course. So here we go. Level 150 in just a second. There we go. And done. Okay. So this is the stats um, all together with um, the runes that I have on. You get about this much stats. Also, in case you didn't know, I am given to... Um, Two strength runes with mutant life runes, uh, so that she gets some life out of that. You know what I mean? Like a plus eighty-seven thousand right there. Uh, that's actually pretty good, helping her life health because she is kind of lacking on life. So that will help her out. If you have any mutant runes that has, let's say, either uh, life with uh, strength or life with speed, go ahead and equip it on this mythic. Uh, but anyways, whatever you do, here are the stats with out the brains okay in, in case you want to know uh, but let's go ahead and take it back to pvp and we're gonna go ahead and continue this let's see how powerful she is now okay so let's go let's see what we got oh another one of these bases you're gonna see these bases everywhere but if you have this monster in your team no problem you're gonna win easily 
So I can go ahead and use Age Overseer right away. Because that Earth versus Earth is just gonna be a un it's just very annoying, you know. It's gonna be pain in the butt. So the CDA didn't land, of course, because I have dodge area. That's why the dodge area is really, really nice as a trait. So all of these monsters are earth. So yeah, but even though they're all earth, I could still deal a ton of damage because of my level. So uh, I could actually just go with the double damage. And then next turn with uh, Lindworm, what I can do is use Sequence Bender. And now I have double damage. I have Unrelenting Assault and I have Laser Beam Sword. All that together. Look at this. Look how powerful this is. And this is Earth versus Earth, by the way. 200k damage. <laughs> Eliminate it. Bye bye. Shirts is Amelie kicked in as well. Removed stamina. Although it didn't have to, but hey, it is what it is, you know? Uh, but, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this. So, this mythic is quite powerful, I've gotta say. Uh, do I recommend buying this month's uh, pass for this mythic? Yes. Uh, this mythic, I actually do like it a lot. If you have the right team, something like this. You can gain a lot of trophies um, on PvP, like you could climb up there. So this time we're going up against a base like this. Let's see what we can do. Wow. This is a 132 and 142 Master Rats. And, uh, yeah, so they're both dead basically. Because Master Rat, um, I, know, I know it says it's not strong enough for Master Rat, but remember, I have Laser Beam Sword and I have Shares of Amulet. And I also have Unrelenting Assault. So all that kicking in all at the same time is... Well, I mean, one of them, just one is enough itself. Doesn't matter which one. It was all just enough. Whichever one kicked in first. So I just needed one of them. And then I could basically end up hitting you with that. Bam. And get rid of you. Easy peasy. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this mythic is pretty powerful. Anyways, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's Monster Agents Monster Review on the Monster Lady Meow. I'm going to be doing a review on the exclusive Legends Pass, the Mega Taunt, very soon. So I hope you guys are subscribed and you have notifications on to see that. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.